And consider for a moment the end of the world. Throughout the centuries, many suggestions have been made as to how it will come about and when. But few more sinister than this. These things, whatever they may be, have not only succeeded in throwing us out of their element with ease, but already they have advanced to do battle with us in ours. For the moment we have pushed them back, but they will return. For the same urge drives them as drives us, the necessity to exterminate or be exterminated. And when they come again, if we let them, they will come better equipped. Or maybe this might be the beginning of the end. And there's certainly intelligence in them of a kind. Have you noticed that when they attack, they always go for the unprotected parts? Almost always the head, but sometimes the hands. And another thing, if you look at the statistics of casualties, just take a notice of the proportion that has been stung across the eyes and blinded. It's remarkable and significant. Well, those were both quotations from remarkable books. The first referring to strange intelligences living under the ocean, which finally melt the poles and flood the world. The second to a species of vicious vegetable called triffids, which take possession of the earth. Now both these books, The Day of the Triffids and The Kraken Wakes, as well as these others, are by one of the country's best-known writers of science fiction, John Wyndham. Uh, recently, another example of his preoccupation with sinister and superhuman forces of evil has been made into a film called The Village of the Damned. It's the story of the horrors that take place when these intelligences possess a group of young children and equip them with powers of genius and destruction. Well, the basis of that film was The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. And today, Mr. John Wyndham's latest book, or yesterday rather, but it's just out, is called Trouble with Lichen. Well, Mr. Wyndham, your books all deal with evil and fantastic happenings, very often, usually, in fact, set in fairly ordinary situations. Now, do you consciously set limits on these fantastic happenings? Do you limit your fantasy, or is it a case of anything goes? Well, I wouldn't say they're all evil, but, of course, there do have to be limits. The, um, what one starts with is the theme, and then you work it out to the logical conclusion as far as possible. But there is a, an upward and a, a lower limit, and sometimes it works out so that the lower limit, well, is unacceptable, it's, it's unpleasant. Could you explain a little more what you mean by a, a, an upper and a lower limit? Well, the, the, uh, the upper limit of, uh, of sheer invention mm. uh, is really what is acceptable in, in the circumstances to the, the public you are writing, who you're, whom you're hoping to please and whose attention you're hoping to keep. Somebody once said that um, the uh, heart of fantasy is the uh, willing suspension of disbelief. Well, you must not go beyond um, a certain barrier, if you can find it, in which that uh, willing suspension is uh, shattered. Well, have you found that barrier, do you think, satisfactorily in your own terms, um, on the, the upper limit? Well, uh, sometimes. One never can tell. But uh, for, for the most part, I, I, think, uh, I think so. Can you illustrate it? Then? Well, the, the, um, the, in the, as far as the upper limit is concerned, you, you carry your inven invention to a point uh, where it is acceptable to your reader. For instance, your English reader does not care for the idea of spaceships. I don't quite know why he does. Your American reader loves spaceships, but uh, in England you don't. Now, in the, in the downward limit, some of the logical outcomes are not acceptable. For instance, in the... Um, which was it, the, uh, the chrysalids. You see, you have a world that has been devastated by atomic bombs, and there are a lot of mutations resulting. Now, most mutations would naturally be pretty unpleasant, but one doesn't want to, to follow that along. I mean, it would swamp the whole story. So that, that one minimizes, one leaves out the, the most unpleasant ones, or even to a point of... Um, of, of
tasteless ones. For instance, there was uh, in the original a point where a man had uh, his hat was knocked off and he was seen to have a third eye in the top of his head. Mm. Well, there's no reason why he shouldn't have a, a third eye, but it just it just has an unpleasant taste. So this was uh, the uh, limit of the lower depth. Uh, on on the whole, the story off. seemed uh, pleasanter without it. Yes. Well, now, may I ask you, Mr. Wyndham, where it is that you rely upon, how it is you rely upon, and indeed what it is you rely upon for your stimulus? I mean, after all, you're dealing with subjects of fantasy which are outside our own experience. Do you simply brood and think of more and more evil? Well, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say they're all evil. You know, the, the Midwich Cuckoo's children look very evil in the film, mm. but they aren't so evil in the original story. No, um, sometimes one gets um, an idea thrown at one. The uh, original Triffids one, I think, came one night when I was walking along a dark lane in the country and the hedges were only just distinguishable against the sky mm. and the higher things sticking up from the hedges became rather menacing and felt that they might come over and strike down or if they had stings, sting at one. Mm. So that uh, the whole thing eventually grew out of that. The moving vegetable would be a real menace. Are you ever appalled by the fruits of your imagination? Um, oh, I didn't think I'm appalled. Uh, once when I was younger, before the war, when I was trying to write uh, ghost stories, I used to, to frighten myself pallid. Yes, but you got over that now. Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, th these aren't frightening, I don't think. No. Well, thank you very much indeed for doing that. Thank you.